main boss. The entrance to the dungeon has been completed. Please note, he will not be able to leave the dungeon until he fulfills the clearing condition. In the system window, his name is written, and that his level is 1. His profession is a potion maker. Health points 122 points, mana points 18 points out of 30 points, physical strength 21 points, defense 27 points, intelligence 30 points, agility 19 points, luck 11 points. Jinfrey looks at this and thinks that the recommended level for clearing a C rank dungeon ranges from 17 to 30. There is nothing for beginners to do here, and he doesn't even have normal armor. He looks to the side and decides to see if it's so dangerous here. Jinfrey went further into the forest and met with a huge monster and the system notifies that this is a level 17 devil plant. He summons his centipede dagger, looks at this monster, and thinks that the difference between him and the monsters is 16 levels. Of course, it's scary, but... Jinfrey grabbed his dagger and immediately got into a fighting stance. He looks at the devil plant in front of him and thinks that he will kill it with one hit. The system notifies that the devil plant begins to attack. This monster launches several plus, its roots towards him at high speed. Jinfrey dodges this attack and thinks it's pretty fast but he already knows all the attacks of this monster by heart. He jumps very high above the monster and thinks that the weak of this devilish plant is in the bud. He strikes very hard with his dagger and defeats this monster. The system notifies that he dealt a precise blow to the devilish plant at vulnerable points. The perception skill worked. The level 17 devil plant has been defeated. Jinfrey was pleased with himself and said that this had to be proven. The system notifies that he has received experience points. His level has been raised to 10. Jinfrey says that for killing one devilish plant, he leveled up quite well, even somehow too quickly. In this game, health points and mana points increase automatically with each level. The system notifies that he has the 10th level, the profession of a potion maker. Health points 158 points, mana points 18 points out of 57 points. The remaining characteristics remained at the same level. The available number of status points was 45. Jinfrey says that for each new level you gain 5 status points. He has enough strength, so he decided to invest all his points in defense. He happily hugs his dagger and says that he has increased his level and improved his stats, all thanks to this dagger. He thinks that the centipede has the skill of perception. Now the attack power of his weapon is 66 points, so he can clear a rank B dungeon without any problems. But the true potential of this weapon will only be revealed with time. Jinfrey happily looks at this dagger and says that this would happen sooner. He goes further into the forest and says that since it's too early for him to go to the boss, he wants to go and raise the level further. He continues to walk through this forest and hears some strange sounds. He pays attention to this, silently looks to the side, and thinks that in the end he was surrounded. He notices that three huge monsters have crawled out of the forest, and the system notifies that these are noir snakes, two of the 23rd level and one of the 24th level. Jinfrey looks at it with a calm expression and thinks that it is a mid-level rank C dungeon monster, Snake Noir. The probability of meeting as many as three such snakes is 1%. Suddenly one of these monsters moves very quickly towards him with his mouth wide open, and this greatly surprised Jinfrey, who was in thought. He manages to jump to the side and dodges the attack of this huge snake. He looks at the monster that attacked him, does not notice the second monster behind him, and says that they are still just as fierce. Jinfrey manages to dodge another monster's unexpected attack at the last moment and screams out in surprise. He bounces a couple of meters and two monsters follow him. Jinfrey looks at this and thinks that first he needs to pull himself together. Although he has no reason to panic, because he has already fought against these monsters. So their weaknesses have long been known to him. Jinfrey jumps up very high and thinks that there is one soft tissue in the neck area. He flies towards these monsters and thinks that if he manages to pierce this, then the enemy will suffer three times the damage. He stabs with his dagger, but is unable to pierce the scales of this monster. Another snake at the moment of this blow stood between them and protected the monster it was trying to attack. This really surprises Jinfrey, and he wonders if he just defended his friend. Suddenly, another monster attacked him from behind and bit him hard on the shoulder. Jinfrey was very embarrassed by what had happened and clenched his teeth in pain. His hand shakes very much due to pain. He swings a dagger and curses loudly. Jinfrey strikes very quickly with his dagger and cuts off the head of the snake that bit him. After that, he fell to the ground and the system notifies that the noir snake of the 23rd level has been defeated. Gained experience points and he increased the level to 13. Health points 8 out of 169. Mana points 18 out of 65. Warning, health status at death. You must immediately leave the danger zone and heal. Jinfrey thinks that as expected. One bite almost killed him. 
a small smile appears on his face, and he thinks that, however, he foresaw this situation. It's not for nothing that he invested all his points into defense at the 10th level. Although almost all of his health points were removed, he did not die. All conditions were created. The system notifies that all the conditions for activating skill number two in the centipede have been met. His agility parameter has increased tenfold and is 190 points. Jinfrey very quickly strikes many times with his dagger and defeats the monsters that were about to attack him. The system notifies you that centipede weapon skill number two, divine speed, a passive skill, increases agility tenfold, provided that the user is on the verge of death. The corpses of monsters fall to the ground, and the system notifies that noir snakes of the 23rd and 24th level have been defeated. Jinfrey turns to the bodies of these monsters, apologizes, and says that, however, he is not going to die so easily. The system notifies that experience points have been received, and its level has been increased to 17th. The bodies of the snakes that were lying on the ground begin to slowly disappear. Jean Frisell is by the tree, holding his shoulder wound and saying that he's done well, even though he almost died. He thinks it would be nice to restore his health, but then the skill will stop working. Jinfrey smiles and thinks that it would be sad to refuse such a tasty bonus that increases agility tenfold. It seems he can still hold out. He gets to his feet and says that, however, it's not worth the risk anymore. After some time, somewhere in the forest, where several trees were broken, a large monster with many sharp teeth and four eyes is chasing someone and is about to attack. Jinfrey strikes the monster's head with a very strong dagger and cuts off the head. He landed behind that monster as his body fell to the ground. He looks somewhere to the side and says with a smile that everything is as he thought. He sees many corpses of the monsters he defeated and says that with this skill, killing monsters has become easier. No wonder he activated it. Jinfrey continues to go deeper into the forest and says that now his leveling will go faster. After killing the boss, he will be able to apply a new synthesis. He thinks that for this, he will need water, thorny grass, a large bunch of blueberries, a caterpillar, skull jelly leaves, a blood flower, and a chestnut seed. Jinfrey stands still and ignores the monster behind him and says that it takes a lot of ingredients to synthesize a D-rank item. He very quickly defeated this monster, and sitting on his body, he says that it seems as if he is preparing something from real life. Such aspects ruin all the fun. He sighs and says that nagging won't help him with this matter. Jinfrey continues walking into the forest and says that he needs to collect everything before meeting the boss. After some time, somewhere near the river, which is located in the same forest. Jinfrey placed several ingredients that he had collected in this place on the white cloth. He approached a flower that grows next to the river. He took out a small berry and thinks that he has found a bunch of blueberries, and the work is going quite quickly. Someone recognized him, called him by name, and asked if it was him. Jinfrey turns around at this voice and thinks about it. He sees two guys and thinks that he and them are from the same village. The guy with yellow hair grinned when he noticed him and said that it was really him. He does not believe that such a loser as he became an adventurer. Jinfrey looks at him, calls him by name, and thinks that he became an adventurer two or three years ago. It's strange that he still walks through dungeons like this. Julius asks, so he really chose the profession of a potion maker. This is ridiculous. His weapons are also very bad. The guy who came with him asks him who he is. Is this his friend? Julius agrees and says that he has known him since childhood. His family was the poorest in their village. He may not pay attention to him, he has always been strange. His father died long ago, and his mother was bedridden. The guy asks, is this true? He was unlucky. Jinfrey doesn't answer him at all and wonders why he met him. His father died when he was still little, and his younger sister still looks after his mother. He became an adventurer to earn money. Julius asks if he even listens to them. They're actually talking about him here. What's with his look? Maybe he hasn't been beaten for a long time. He grabbed Jinfrey by the clothes, and he wonders what to do with him. Suddenly, they hear very loud sounds, and he recognizes this roar that he just heard. They both turn towards where the loud sound came from. The guy is very shocked by what he saw, and is trying to say about what he sees. He stands stunned in front of a huge monster, and the system notifies that the boss Cyclops of the 31st level has appeared. Julius was very surprised by this, and asked why he was standing still. They need to escape from here. Jinfrey says it's pointless because he's already the boss's target. The Cyclops swings his hand in which he holds a huge club, and makes very loud sounds. He deals a very strong blow and kills this guy, who is shocked by the appearance of the boss. Jinfrey was very surprised by what happened and thinks that the Cyclops killed this guy with one blow. Because of his strong surprise, Julius fell to the ground, his body trembled very much, and he screamed in fear. Cyclops turns to them, and the system notifies that the boss of the 31st level is using the all-seeing eye skill. 
Jinfrey looks at this huge monster and thinks that fighting the boss with such a difference in levels is extremely dangerous. His defense is too strong. If he doesn't hurry up, he'll repeat the fate of that guy. The Cyclops swings his huge club and is about to strike a very strong blow. The dungeon boss does this strike to the ground and does very heavy area damage. Jinfrey is about to run away from this Cyclops until he looks at him and thinks that on top of everything else, this boss has a skill where he focuses on only one target. At the same moment, the monster notices him and the system notifies that he has become the target of the Cyclops. Because of the all-seeing eye, not a single prey will escape him. Jinfrey summons his dagger and says that it looks like he has no choice. Cyclops raises his hand with a club and screams very loudly. The monster delivers a very strong blow with its club and creates destruction over a large area. Jinfrey dodged this attack and thinks that he knows all the moves of this boss and with his godly speed, he will be able to dodge his attacks. Julius sits on the ground in surprise and watches Jinfrey fight against the Cyclops. He was very surprised by what was happening and asked if it was really him. But how does he do it? At the same time, Jinfrey runs very quickly to the side and behind his back the Cyclops struck the ground. He thinks with a serious leaf expression that he won't be able to defeat this boss by running away alone. He jumps onto the monster's club, which he hit the ground with. He begins to run very quickly along this club towards the hand of this monster. The Cyclops swings his other arm to grab or hit him and screams very loudly. The monster tried to grab him, but Jinfrey anticipated this and jumped away from this hand. He jumped very high and looks at the Cyclops, who did not understand where he had gone. He is focused on this Cyclops' neck and thinks that he must act now. He swings his dagger to make a very strong blow with his dagger and thinks that he needs to do it while his neck is open. Jinfrey hit the huge Cyclops in the neck and thinks that all his fears have been confirmed. He looks at his neck and thinks that no damage has passed through him. He raises his dagger and it is clear that a minor cut remains in the place where he struck. The Cyclops felt that he was on his neck and immediately turned to him. Jinfrey notices this monster swinging a club at him. Immediately after he noticed this, he quickly jumped to safety and dodged this blow. He looks at this monster with a serious expression on his face and says that it is difficult for him to fight with him because of such a big difference in levels. Julius hides in the bushes, watches what is happening, and hears a very loud scream of the Cyclops. He watches as Jinfrey fights against the boss of this dungeon and dodges his attacks. Julius looks at what is happening with great surprise and thinks that he is too fast. Maybe some kind of buff has been applied to him. Jinfrey dodges the club attack from the Cyclops and continues to run away. He breathes heavily, follows the monster's movements, and thinks that this way he won't be able to create it. He already has a large bunch of blueberries, thorny grass, and a blood flower. It could be found nearby. He notices Julius, who is lying in the bushes and thinks that if it weren't for the boss, he would have gotten it long ago. He notices the missing ingredients next to it and thinks that's it. Jinfrey runs towards him and leads the Cyclops, who swings his large club. Julius was very frightened when he noticed this and asked where he was running. Jinfrey runs next to him and the system notifies that the following items have been added to his inventory. Skull Jelly Leaves Rank D, Chestnut Seed Rank F, Caterpillar Rank F. Jinfrey runs towards the lake and thinks that the last ingredient left is water. He stands knee-deep in the lake, and the system notifies that he has obtained the ingredient water rank F. Jinfrey loudly says that he is now activating the synthesis. Energy begins to float around him, which raises the water around him and several cells of the system appear. He created the item, and the system notifies that a rank E poison has been manufactured. Effect. If this enters the body, health will gradually decrease every second. Julius was very surprised by this and asked, Is this poison? Doesn't he know this? Cyclops has a high resistance to poison. His low ranking poison will not work on him. Jinfrey says he is well aware of this. He thinks that is why his goal was something else. The system notifies that he used the cerebrospinal fluid of Snake Noir rank C. Jinfrey thinks that is why his goal was to synthesize this common poison with this item. The system notifies that a potent rank D poison has been manufactured. Effect, if this enters the body, then health will decrease significantly every second. Julius was surprised by what he just saw and thought about it. Did he synthesize the same item twice? Jinfrey thinks there's more to come. He pours this poison onto the dagger and uses the synthesis skill. Julius was very surprised by this and asked what that just happened. The system notifies that a centipede of unknown rank has received a poisonous attribute. Jinfrey holds the dagger in his hand and thinks that this is the true power of his weapon. Julius looks at what is happening with great surprise and wonders what it was. He synthesized the poison three times and discovered a new attribute. He was very surprised and frightened when he heard the loud cry of a cyclops behind him. 
Jinfrey smiles and apologizes to the giant for having to wait for him and asks if he wants to arrange a second round. The Cyclops swings his huge club and lets out a very loud roar. The monster delivers a very strong blow with its club, but Jinfrey manages to jump back and dodge this blow. He runs very quickly around the Cyclops, dodging the monster's attacks and striking with his dagger. Jinfrey dodges another club blow from the Cyclops, which hits the ground next to him.